everyone, it's Tony again with another project for your home. Now this project was a request from one of our viewers, Karathala Aim. She saw a piece in the store that she thought was beautiful and wanted to try to recreate it. And it looks like it's made up of little mosaic pieces or mirrored pieces. It's a little hard to tell and it looks like it's on a metal backing and there are these little floral designs and um, I think that I can recreate this using all Dollar Tree pieces so it won't be expensive. We'll try it out and see what works. Also, I wanted to have a nice piece for my bedroom too to go with all my silver and mirror mosaic pieces. So let's do that, it'll be fun and that's what we're creating today. For today's project, I'm using silver serving trays, clear glass gems, a couple of sheets of cardstock, clear craft glue, Mod Podge, metallic acrylic paint, and Gorilla Clear Grip glue. Okay, so the wall art that my viewer liked was a long rectangular piece on what looks like a metallic background. Like I said, it's a little hard to tell what these pieces are made of, but they look like little tiles and I'm not sure if they're mirror or just like ceramic tiles, but I'm gonna attempt to make little tile pieces using these pieces of cardstock. I have a couple of sheets of white and gray cardstock, and I'm gonna start by pasting three sheets together to make a thicker sheet. I'm using Mod Podge as my paste, and I'm spreading it all over the sheet, all the way to the edges and I am going to line these sheets up, press them together, and place a book on top of it to keep the sheets flat until they dry. Now after the sheets dry, I cut this sheet in half so I could use the white side and the gray side. And I'm gonna use my metallic paint to paint the sheet to make my tiles. I'm gonna paint part of the sheet silver and then blend it in with a little gold and I'll use bronze and black and there's a little bit of blue and violet and red inside the circular pieces on the inspiration photo. So after letting these half pieces that were painted dry and put in a book on top of that to flatten it out, I have my sheets that I'm going to make my towels out of. To cut these towel pieces, I'm using an X-Acto knife and a ruler. And I'm gonna start right at the top and not going all the way to the edge. I'm gonna cut three cuts per line just to make sure I go all the way through. And I'm moving it over just like maybe a, an eighth or a fourth of an inch. And I'm gonna make slits all the way down the sheet like this and then I'll turn it vertically and then I'll cut slits all the way down this way. And these pieces look more rectangular so I'm going to cut the slits so that they are about maybe a half of inch long. And I'll end up with a bunch of little pieces that look like this. And I think these should work perfect for my tile pieces. So with just that one page size, eight and a half by 11 sheet, um, thick sheet that I made, I got all of these little pieces. I have a gradation of colors, gray, gold, bronze, brown, and black. And that should be enough to be able to use to make my floral mosaic design. I'm testing this out, so I'm gonna make a really small one. I also have this sheet with some colors, some blue and violet and red that is in the inspiration photo. I use this to make the circles that are in the center of the flowers. It looked like that piece was on some sort of metal background. So I'm gonna use this silver tray as a background. And I cut out little circles um, of that color that I painted on the cardstock. I'm using this clear craft glue I got from Dollar Tree. I also got the tray from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to try this glue out. This is new and I think it might work well because it dries clear. 
So I'm going to put a little glue on the back of this circle and put it on the pan where um, I want to start my floral design. Then I'll put a dab of glue on top of that circle and put a clear gem on top of that. And that will be the center of my flower. Now I can lay down my floral design, my towels to shape my flowers. I'm using tweezers and a toothpick to help push these pieces into place. I think for this flower I'll do silver in the center and black on the outside. I'm also cutting some of these pieces to make it shape more like a petal. The ones in the center I cut as a triangle. And I think I have a flower that's starting to look more like that inspiration piece. Now I'll just start laying a few more flowers down for the face of this. Okay, so here's what I have after putting a few more flowers down. Now the background is a little different. So I think I'm gonna paint the background so to give it a little texture like the inspiration piece and see how that turns out. Okay, so it looks like that background has some silver and gold. So I'm just gonna brush some brush strokes that are kind of swirly in between the petals and all over the background. This is what it looks like when it dries. I think that's looking pretty close. One thing that I think might help is a little black in between the cracks. So with a very diluted brush with black and water, I'm just gonna brush on the petals and the background some black. I just want the black to go in between the cracks. So I'm going to brush it on and brush it off the petals and mainly around the outside of the petals so that they'll stand out. So what I'm going to do to finish this off is put a coating of gloss over the entire piece. And I'm using this clear glue to do this. I'm coating the entire piece with this over the flowers and the background. And it will sort of seal and protect it and give it a nice gloss over the whole piece. And while that's drying, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to make a frame using these clear gems. And this will match the gems that are in the center in the piece. So I'm using a dot of Gorilla Clear Grip Glue and I'm putting that on the back of each gem and I'm just going to put gems all the way around the edge of this piece. And this is what that looks like when it's dry. I did change this gem at the top here. It was red and um, I thought it was 
just a little too much. I wanted these colors to be subtle like the one in the inspiration piece. Doing it like this, you can also add some more panels to make one long piece like the inspiration piece or use one big metal tray. I think I got this one from Goodwill. Now I need to be able to hang this on the wall so I'm going to just use a craft stick and cut it in half and I'm using a piece of wire. I'm going to put the wire underneath the craft stick and I'm just going to put some glue on each edge of the craft stick. Turn that over and glue that to the back of the serving tray. I'm doing that on both sides and I'm just going to put a little weight on here to keep the sticks down. After it's dry, I can twist the wire around itself and then be able to hang it on the wall. Okay, so here it is, my experiment with the viewer's request. And I think it looks pretty nice. I think it came out pretty close to the way the inspiration image looks. But, you know, I just thought of a different way of doing this that I think might be really beautiful and would go really well in my bedroom. So let's try another option. For this alternative option, I'll be using oval silver serving trays, framed mirrors, black poster paper, Mod Podge, metallic acrylic paint, mosaic tile adhesive, a hammer, goggles, and Gorilla Clear Grip Glue. Now I happen to have quite a few of these metal serving trays and although it's not one long piece, I thought it would be interesting to put the pieces together this way to give it a nice 3D look. And the floral designs could be framed on each of these panels. So let's glue these pieces together to make the base for our wall art. The bottom three trays I'm going to overlap and glue them at the edges. But first I want to make sure they're lined up because I want this piece to be straight. So I'm going to use my ruler and a straight edge to make sure that everything is lined up and squared off. I'm using a T-square and a ruler to draw two straight lines on each side of the trays. And then I'm straightening and positioning the trays inside the two lines and I'm going to draw around the trays so I know what position to place the trays when I'm gluing them together. I'll be using Gorilla Clear Grip glue to glue these pieces together. Okay, so I see that it's going to touch like right here and on these edges here. So that's where I want to put the glue. Here. Put some here, right in the center. Okay. Then I'm gonna line this up starting from the back. The two remaining trays I want to sit on top of these three, but I want them to touch right in the center. So I'm going to put a little mark right here in the center of the middle tray and line these two up right between each tray. And now I can glue the last two down. So I'm going to put glue right here and here right around these arcs between these two little um, design points. And I'm putting it right at the highest point of the relief on the tray on um, both ends. And I also want to make sure these are lined up and straight and centered. 
Okay, so these are all glued together. I'm going to set these aside to dry while I work on the mosaic part. Okay, for this option, instead of using the cardboard tiles, I'm going to use mirrored mosaic tiles. So I got these little frame mirrors from Dollar Tree and I'm going to take them out of the frame. Now before you draw all the backings away, I want to use one of these for the backing of my finished piece. So I'm going to just cut these two hooks out and I'm going to position them on the back of my long piece and I'm going to use some Gorilla Clear Grip glue to glue these to the back of the trays so that I could hang a wire between the two hooks and hang it on the wall. And I'll set that piece aside again and continue with my mosaic pieces. And to the back of each mirror, I'm going to glue this black poster paper. I am using mosaic towel adhesive that I had already and I'm going to brush that on the back of the mirrors. I'm using a really thick coat and I'm brushing it on every inch of the mirror and I'm placing that down onto the black paper. And I just cut this piece out so I could really press that glue in to the back. I'm using a spoon. I'm just going to kind of varnish it in. And I'll do the same to a couple of more pieces of mirror. While that paper is drying on the back of the mirrors, I am going to do like a design. Uh, so I know where I want to put my floral designs on these pieces. So I'm just going to draw something out. I'm going to draw the shape of each panel and draw like a floral design. Instead of just flowers, I think I want to have more of a scene. So I traced around those sections where I want the design to go and I'm drawing some little floral designs. So I decided to do some mostly flowers in the middle and I have leaves at the bottom and flowers at the top and then Something that looks like a sky, like some uh, sun and some swirly lines for clouds. So that's what I'm going to try to do on this piece, something that looks like that. Okay, so now that the paper is dried on the back of the mirror, I'm going to use my cracked mirror method to make these towels. And I'm putting each piece of mirror with the backing inside a baggie and I'm going to use my hammer to break up, to crack up the mirror. Starting at the edges, I'm going to make some cracks and I put this on paper. I usually do this on material um, because I want it flexible, but this doesn't have to be flexible. This is going to be flat, so the paper works fine. So I'm just going to go around and um, crack it up starting from the edges and then going towards the center and you're going to just gently tap it um, till it starts to crack until it looks something like this and before you take this out of the bag you want to put on some gloves and goggles I'm also going to use a big paintbrush to brush off the shards before I pull it out of the bag. Okay, I have all of my cracked mirror mosaic sheets ready and I am going to use the design that I drew as a template for the pieces. So I'm going to start cutting out the shapes, the petal shapes from the um, template and use that as a guide to cut the shapes from the mirror mosaic piece. And this frame mirror is pretty thin, so you can actually just cut right through it with scissors. Okay, when you're cutting this mirror, you want to make sure you have on gloves as well as goggles because the little pieces will fly everywhere and you don't want them to get into your eyes. So make sure you're protected. 
So what I'm doing is cutting out one piece of the design at a time and I'm tracing it over the mirror mosaic with a dry erase marker. I'm using a dry eraser marker because it wipes off easy from the mirror. Then I'm cutting that out and positioning the pieces on the mirror. And when I get everything in the right position, then I am going to use my Gorilla Clear Grip glue to glue each piece down. And here's my design after I got all the pieces cut out and glued down. As you can see, I also used those clear gems for the center of the flower petals. But I have flowers. Up here at the top I have the sun and some clouds. I have stems and leaves at the bottom. I even have pieces on the sides. So with this one I think I want to add just a tiny bit of color. I want it mostly to be silver and mirror but I'm gonna add just touches of color. So I'm just gonna wash on a little bit of gold maybe in the center and around some of the petals, some bronze, and I am using my metallic paint here. Just very, very lightly. And I'm using a little green on the stems here. So the color is very diluted, very subtle, but I have some purples in here and um, a little bit of red, um, just some little sparkles of color I want to show up. So when it dries, you can see it's very, very light. You can barely see the colors, but when it turns in the light, you can see just little sparkles of green and red and violet and gold. I even have a little blue in the sky and some yellow in the sun. So now everything's finished and dry. I brushed off all the little pieces on the front and I'm going to turn this over now and put a piece of wire on the back so I can hang this on my wall. So I really, really like the way this came out. It's very sparkly with just touches of color. It goes just perfect in my bedroom right next to my nightstand, next to my mosaic lamp, my gold vase, and it accents my sparkly pillow. Perfect touch. So thank you Quatala Aim for the request and I hope that these two options are something that you can use and enjoy. Hey guys, check out my Etsy store. I just added new products from this show with free shipping. And for just a few dollars, you can get instant digital downloads of full color step-by-step -step instructions with templates for some of your favorite projects. And check out my Amazon page where you can pick up my multi-surface acrylic metallic paint back in stock with eight beautiful shimmering colors. You can mix millions of colors and create endless home beauty for indoor and outdoor projects. And while you're there, pick up my Book of Elegant Home Crafts Volume 1. With all your favorite projects together in one big beautiful colored step-by-step -step instruction book. On my Amazon page, you'll see all my favorite crafting tools and supplies used on this show. And you can add them all to your cart for the one-click fast and easy shopping and delivery convenience of Amazon. I'll be working every day to make crafting fun and easy for you. Follow me at Your House of Home and Your House of Home TV on all social media for extra home, food, and gardening tips.